Hello students, Miss Watson here, and today we're taking a look at factors affecting local climates. Now, that could be climates like our own with our next door neighbors here in Toronto, or it could be climates elsewhere on Earth, but all of these same factors will influence what the climate is like in each of those different locations around the Earth. So, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the factors that determine local climate. So in order to talk about climate, we need a little bit of terminology. The first is that there are two different ways to classify climate. The one that we usually use is climate zones, and it looks only at the climate itself. So things like weather, or sorry, uh, things like temperature, wind, precipitation, and so on. And then there are ecoregions, which is also used to classify climate, but it includes more than just climate. It also includes landforms, soil, plants, animals, and so on. And so you can see from the two pictures there what our ecoregions and what our climate zones look like in Canada. And for the rest of this course, we are going to be focusing on the climate zones, but be aware that there are different ways of classifying climate. So there are a few different factors that affect climate. The first is latitude, so that's how far uh, location is from the equator, so either north or south, how far it is from the equator. Altitude, and that's how high something is above sea level, so if it's near the sea or if it's at the top of a mountain, that's altitude. Topography has to do with whether it's very flat there or whether there's a mountain. Presence of large bodies of water, so is it near an ocean or is it somewhere that's very much landlocked? And then presence of ocean and air currents. Now that last one we've already talked about, so we won't go into that in this uh, presentation, but you can always watch that other video, and I'll put a link in the description box down below about those ocean, uh, those uh, water and air currents. So first of all, latitude. Um, near the equator, the sun feels much more, uh, or the sun is much more directly overhead. So as you can see from the picture, the line at the bottom going towards the equator is very much directly overhead and it hits a small area of land. If you look at the line that's a little bit higher, you can see that there's a much thicker area of earth that's actually being hit along that curve. So where it's hitting at the equator, it's just a small area, but it's a much wider area towards the poles. And so it's gonna feel a lot stronger sun, a lot hotter at the equator. Also at the poles, not only do you not have that direct sunlight, but the energy has to travel through more atmosphere because it's coming on that angle, so some of the radiation gets reflected and that makes it even colder. The next effect is the altitude. So you can see all these people here. If you think about it, which one of these people or which of several of these people would be feeling the most or the least amount of pressure? Well, obviously the person standing up at the top would have the least pressure because nobody is pushing down on them. And all those people on the bottom row, they're gonna have a lot more pressure because they have the weight of all those people above them crushing down on them. So as you go up in altitude, there's a lot less pressure. So we see that with their air um, towards the, the top of a mountain, let's say, the, the lo there's a much lower air pressure because there isn't more air pushing down on top of it or there's less air pushing down on top of it. Um, and this lower air pressure, it means that the, the molecules are less likely to collide and so it makes it cooler. Lower down, there's a lot of air pushing down on top of that particular set of air molecules. They're closer together, more likely to bump into each other, which makes it warmer. So um, air rises at high altitudes, it expands due to the low pressure, and this makes it cool down. Now the next one is topography, and sometimes we refer to this as the rain shadow effect. So what happens, if you have a mountain that's right next to a large body of water, like a lake or an ocean, you have water that's, uh, you're, sorry, you have wind that's coming up from the ocean, and it's bringing precipitation up with it, and when those clouds rise, they get heavy and they need to start dropping the precipitation so that the air can get over the other side of the mountain. So the side that's directly next to the water is going to be getting a lot of precipitation as those clouds are trying to get up and over the mountain. On the other side, the air is all dry because all of the precipitation has already been dropped on the first side of the mountain. 
So the second side gets very little precipitation. So the two sides of the mountain will look very, very, very different from each other. The side that's next to the ocean will be lush, it has lots of trees. The other side will be very dry and it has poor growth of trees. So you can see from that picture, the, the side with the rain, you've got all these looks like little evergreens that they've drawn there and the other side only has a few little bit of shrubbery down towards the bottom of that mountain. And then large bodies of water. So water can absorb and store more thermal energy or more heat than land can. And so water will heat up more slowly and it'll cool down more slowly than land does. This means that if you're near an ocean or near a lake, then that region will be warmer in the winter time and cooler in the summer time. And also regions that are downwind will get a lot more precipitation because they're near that water. And then finally, currents. We've already talked about these. Again, check out the link in the description box below about your water and air currents. But things like convection currents, the high and low pressure areas, trade winds, westerlies, polar easterlies, and thermohaline circulation will all affect the local climate as well. So let's just take another look at our learning goal. You should be able to describe the factors that determine local climate. If you can do that, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.